Hi guys, my name is Bas and welcome to the 14th episode of my SPSS tutorial videos here on YouTube. Today we're going to take another look at multiple linear regression and we're going to take another look at confounders and we're going to make some calculations with them. So uh, if you get the right output and you know how to interpret it, like I showed last time, uh, then now is the time that you need to actually make calculations with it. Uh, I do strongly recommend to watch the 13th episode and the 10th episode of my uh, YouTube tutorial series because they explain uh, linear regression and uh, confounders and you need to understand what it is and how it works before you can actually make these calculations. So if you haven't done already, uh, check episode 10 and check episode 13. Uh, you're not obligated to watch the rest. You are always very much welcome to do so. And make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a like on this video because I want to make this channel grow so if it was in any way or shape helpful to you then please let me know by uh, leaving a like on this video and if you have any questions about multiple linear regression with confounders and how to calculate with them then you can ask it ask it in the comment section down below so we've uh, still got the same model as last time uh, so ice cream, uh, so uh, the relationship between ice cream, uh, the amount of ice creams you eat on a scale of 1 to 10 to the amount of sunburns you have on a scale of 1 to 10. So that's relationship. And at first, by doing a simple linear regression, uh, we found out that it was actually quite a big relationship. But uh, once we took a huge confounder into account, being the temperature on a scale of 1 to 10, we found out that there's actually a big relationship between the temperature and sunburn and the true relationship between ice cream and sunburn wasn't that much. It wasn't significant by country mile. So that's why it's important to take confounders into account. So now we can actually make, make calculations with these. Uh, and we use the same model for that. So you go to analyze, regression, linear, then the dependent variable is the sunburn. And the independents are, first of all, ice cream. And then you click on next. So you go to the second block and you can select, uh, and you can select temperature. So you've got ice cream in the first block and temperature in the second block. You can switch between those with previous and next. Then you press paste. Then you press paste. And if you didn't already have a, a syntax, on the SPSS, it will open right now. At least it should, but it seems like my SPSS isn't really cooperating. Ah, there it is. Okay, there's syntax. Uh, so you select the code from regression until uh, the, uh, the final line, and then you press the big green play button. And then if you go to your actual output screen, you'll see the regression tables, and you need to go to the pre-final uh, table called the coefficients table. And here you can see the two models again, the same as last time. At first, we thought that the relationship between ice cream and sunburn was significant. But once we added temperature, we found out that the relationship between ice cream and sunburn is no longer significant. Well, the relationship between temperature and significance, uh, between uh, temperature and sunburn is a very, very significant. So what we're going to do now is make a calculation. And to do so with the second model, uh, because you can calculate if uh, you eat uh, a certain amount of uh, ice creams in a month and the temperature is a certain amount on a scale of 1 to 10, then you can actually ca calculate uh, how many sunburns you should get as a respondent. Uh, so to do so, you first need to understand the constant. And I explained it in episode 10. The constant, so the slope, you can see it over here. Um, it shows the value of the dependent variable if the independent variable is zero. So in this case, the constant of model one was 0.921. Let's say 0.9. And that is the value of the dependent, so the amount of sunburns you get, when the independent variable is zero. So that means that you eat zero ice creams. So in model one, so in the simple regression, the model shows that if you go and put it in a formula, that the uh, expected y, so the expected dependent variable, so sunburn, is the constant, which is 0.9, plus um, the slope of uh, the slope of the first variable, 
which in this case is 0.841 times the value you add for it, which in this case is 0. So the constant is 0.921 plus 0 times 0.841, which equals 0.921. So it shows the amount, the, it shows the value of the dependent variable when the independent variable is zero. So when you eat zero ice creams, you get 0.9 sunburns during the month. If you look at model two, there are now two, two independent variables, but the formula seems almost exactly the same. The constant is the value of the dependent variable when all independent variables are zero. So in this case, not just when ice cream is zero, but when temperature is zero as well. So in this case, the constant is minus 0.72 is the amount of sunburns you get. So it's the value of the dependent variable when both independent variables are zero. So when you eat zero ice creams in a month and the temperature is also zero, then your the value of sunburns will be minus 0.72. Uh, 0.72, which doesn't exist. Obviously, you can't get a negative. Uh, you can't get a negative amount of sunburns, but it's just because I've made my own da data set here with 15 respondents, uh, with 25 respondents. I've made it like in a minute. So uh, in reality, the minus 0.72 uh, isn't a real value, but that's the amount of that's the amount of the dependent variable if both independent variables are zero. So if the ice cream is zero and temperature is zero, then your sunburn is minus 0.72. Then the slope of the ice cream shows if ice cream increases with one, so if the independent variable increases with one and temperature remains the same, then uh, the uh, the uh, uh, then the the dependent variable, so the sunburns, increase with 0.087. So if you eat one extra ice cream during the month, so if the independent rises with one, then the independent uh, then the dependent, so the amount of sunburns, increases with 0.087. And the same applies for temperature. If the temperature increases with one. So if the independent variable increases with one, then the dependent, so the amount of sunburns, increases with 0.951 from the constant. So you have this constant, which is if ice cream and temperature are zero, but if ice cream increases, then the sunburns increases with 0.087, and temperature, if temperature increases with one, then the amount of sunburns increases with 0.951 times the value and I've so I've shown that uh, I've uh, written down this formula over here so we can make a calculation now why is I'll make it a bit smaller so it will stay on one line voila okay so why was the dependent variable which is the amount of sunburns you want to know how many sunburns someone has and for example, we, we ate five ice creams during the month and the temperature has been an average of eight. Then you can now calculate how many sunburns that person has had. So he has eaten five ice creams and the temperature has been approximately, has approximately been eight on a scale of one to 10. So for, if you go then to the calculation, sunburns equals B0, so the constant, which was minus 0.072, if I'm not mistaken, let me check that, minus 0.072, yes, plus the x of the first variable, well, we said that he has eaten five ice creams during the month, times the slope of the ice cream, which in this case is... Um, 0.087 plus the value for the second independent variable, which in this case was had a temperature of 8 times the slope of that temperature, which was 0.951. 
and if you then you uh, just use your regular calculator then you get to a total of 7.971 so the amount of sunburns a person will get if he eats five ice creams and the temperature is an average of eight will be 7.971 so if you round that off that person will receive exactly eight sunburns in a month which is quite horrible to be honest but it's just an ima it's my imaginary um, imaginary uh, data set so don't take it too seriously so this shows that how you can calculate with uh, multiple independent variables you could have also taken if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to know the amount of sunburns for someone who has eaten six ice creams then you would just replace this five with a six and with a temperature of two so let's say that it's winter time then a really different outcome would get there if you then just calculate this line then you get the new uh, amount of sunburns for uh, someone who's eaten six ice creams during winter time okay so this showed how you can calculate with uh, a multiple linear regression model with one uh, true independent variable and one confounder uh, and in my next video I'll go into mediators but for now this was it if it was helpful please leave a like and subscribe to this channel but for now guys I'm out thanks for watching